Get it? Did we get it? Six nine 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 nine. Damn. We got six nine nine. Maybe we got it. Seven now. Seven. Seven. Okay. It seems. It seems to be there. Let's hope it's not corrupted. Okay, we can try a bit more. Ah. Okay, so that was actually a pretty funny 7 GHz validation with the E8600, as I didn't really uh, go for it at the start of the session. So I just came back from Taiwan from my Computex trip and I still had maybe 25 liters of LN2 remaining. I wanted to go through some of the remaining E8600 CPUs from that very exact same batch that I knew would be very good. The CPUs I tested weren't like good enough, most at least like 6.7, but that's obviously not good enough for me anymore. So I decided to try the very best E8600 once again with the Northbridge on LN2. But unfortunately, as I already knew at the start, it only makes things worse. The memory stability really goes down a lot when you run the Northbridge on LN2. I've seen this before with different Rampage Extreme motherboards, uh, as I've actually tested Northbridge on cold quite briefly a few times before. There's definitely something missing because I don't really understand why it goes so bad on the memory stability when you lower the temperature of the North Bridge even to like close to zero and especially below zero. There's definitely something missing, maybe some hidden voltage or something that needs to be set manually. I don't really know. I need to discuss about this with like Tapaka, Terraptor from Kazakhstan and so on. So we'll see what happens in the future if we manage to do something regarding running LN2 on North Bridge. But anyways, so uh, I first wanted to try the SuperPi 32M, like would the Northbridge on cold make it any more stable? But unfortunately, as, I, as you can already uh, imagine, it didn't really help at all. So it usually just crashed in SuperPi 32M within the first five loops at 6.8. I managed to run PyFast at 6.85 or 6.86 and I got a score of 13.52, but it crashed after the test finished. Then I really wanted to just try 7 GHz very briefly as I only had like a few liters of LN2 remaining, like 2 or 3 liters. I said pretty high VCO, like 2.06, VTT above 1.55 and I just put it in to the operating system at like 6.9 or 6.91 and I managed to validate 7 GHz-ish twice. The first time I hit the F7 button on my keyboard during the wrong moment, so I got a validation file of 6999. And during the second attempt, I made sure I would hit F7 when it actually showed 7000 on the CPU-Z screen. I managed to validate that score, I mean that frequency, and I already checked the validation file at the CPU-Z validation page, and it does work. So. We are the first that could ever bypass the 7000 MHz barrier on any Wolfdale CPU. That has been a huge milestone many overclockers around the world have dreamed of since 2008. So that's definitely a huge milestone. We almost got it during our previous session, but now after my Computex Taiwan trip, I managed to do it myself and I'm extremely happy about it. So. That's pretty much it, I guess, for the CPU. I need to figure out how to make the 32M more stable to get below seven minutes. 
and I would also like to improve the 1M score a little bit as well and run W prime at 6.85 with a bit better efficiency. But yeah, I still have some of these CPU remaining. I plan to test all of them on LN2 as they are always very random on LN2. So you can't really expect what each CPU can do on LN2 at the very end, like, pro like properly based on the air cooling result. But yeah, that's pretty much it for the CPU huge E8600 and I really hope you like to see my work with these old CPUs and platforms so definitely give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and maybe check out my Patreon page as well if you want to support my work and yeah thanks for watching one of my videos once again and I will see you on the next one.